I'm Jenny, the wig stylist. Uh, this is my model, Donovan. Uh, today we're just going to have a little fun and talk about wigs, how to wear them, how to care for them. A lot of questions that uh, someone who has never worn a wig before, and not many of us have, but with your diagnosis, it's nice to have some information to see, am I going to be a wig wearer? Will this be an option that I'll feel good about? So I want to empower you and give you some train of thought to um, approach wigs and not be afraid of them. First off, these are not your mother's wigs. These are just phenomenal uh, wigs these days. They come synthetic. That means what you see is what you get. This wig will always look like this. You can go out into the humidity that we have in the summer and it will stay its style. It doesn't get dirty. It actually just needs to be washed maybe once a month. Um, when you don't have hair at all, of course my model has hair, but we're, we're doing the best we can like this. And when you don't have hair at all, and you put a wig on, it becomes your hair. It actually feels good. Your head can breathe. They make wigs so differently now. I'm going to start right here at the beginning and just show you the caps of wigs. Um, I find it very interesting that you can customize these things for each person. Your journey is probably just gonna be about a six month one with your wig. So we don't want anything very expensive. Uh, we just want something that's comfortable and something that feels like you. This is an open cap. That means the little slices here actually let the heat come out from your scalp and it can breathe. This is a traditional, this is your starter wig. This is a lace top. It's a little bit warmer. It's not as open on the top, but still it's very doable. It's a starter wig. And what I like about starter wigs, especially if you are to get a complimentary wig through Living Well, um, it would probably be a starter wig. It would be one with just a, a regular cap like this, but it's a good way to test, am I gonna be a wig wearer? You'll wear it for a while. What do you like about it? What don't you like about it? Then maybe you'd wanna invest in one that's a little more customized to you or try a different color. So again, let's go through some of the different kinds. This one's a step up. This one has what we call a lace top right here in the part line. It will actually show your scalp through it. So it looks very realistic. We're just looking at the inside right now. This is a step up from that one. So we've got the part which is lace and we have the front hairline that's gonna be lace. Each hair is hand tied onto this lace and it's gonna look like it's growing right out of your scalp. Very believable. And then we go up to the next level and the whole top is scalp top. Each hair is hand tied onto here. We'll be able to see your scalp under there. Your head can breathe very comfortably with this. It's of course gonna cost a tad more, but it all depends on are, are you hot during your journey? Um, do you have the type of hair you wanna see your part line? This is more, this is kind of the Mercedes of wigs. This is all hand tied. This whole wig, you can kind of see my fingers, has been hand tied. This is a wonderful wig for someone with alopecia that will always have permanent hair loss and they need something as light as a feather. When the wind blows and opens up, it looks like it's growing right out of their scalp. It, it's just an awesome thing. Um, the color. Again, what you see is what you get. It will never fade. The more colors in a wig, this has two tones in it, more believable it looks. This is a rooted style. I think with the COVID, if we do have hair, most of us have roots of some sort today. It looks very believable. It's just a little bit dark and rooted, then it naturally comes out. And this looks less wiggy, even though this is just a basic starter wig. When it's turned like this and we have our roots, it looks very natural. And lastly, the wigs are synthetic. They're made out of plastic. They're made just like Tupperware. They cannot take any heat at all. I took this wig. This is a, a loner um, wig that someone wore for probably about six months. So it's starting to get a little bit compromised because it's a plastic fiber, but it doesn't look terrible. It looks a lot like real hair by this time. I took the wig, 
I boiled water, the steam that came up from the water. I just set it over the steam for about two seconds. It melted. So this is a wig that melted. It really can't be fixed, so stay away from the oven. Maybe just have somebody else do the cooking. <laughs> That's the only downside to a synthetic wig is the heat. Don't try to trim it yourself. It might look like your mom did it. Uh, if you have a stylist that you can trust, I would go to her after you get your wig and very slow baby steps. You're gonna trim wherever you feel on the wig. It's just getting in your eyes because a synthetic fiber can really um, irritate the eyes. But between the two of you, I think you can slowly go through point cut and, and take it to what you need it to be. Some of the thickness, wigs are often said, I'm often told that they're just wiggy. There's too much hair. I don't have that much hair. Your stylist can take a thinning shears and actually take some of the bulk out of it and trim the bangs up. So that's our wig 101. Now let's just have some fun with wigs and let's try some on. Okay, so this wig has a scalp part and a scalp front. It's gonna look very realistic. Hold right there. First off, it looks like it's growing right out of the scalp. Just like scalp. Very believable. Now this is as long as I really like to recommend a wig. When you're going through the cancer journey and um, you're wearing your wig out in public and you're wearing it five days a week it is going to get compromised. It is gonna start getting kind of like split ends because the longer the wig, the more the friction turns it into um, like a doll hair almost. And especially back here in the nape it does. So we wanna make sure we take the tangles out before we put it on from the previous wearing, just with my fingers on up. And this has a lot of layers in it. So that's about as long of a wig that I would want you to purchase uh, because of the maintenance and that of it. I would probably, if I had hair this long and wanted to duplicate what I look like, this wouldn't be my primary wig. I would get another wig that's shorter for most of the time and wear this when I wanna feel like myself and have my long hair again. So there we go. How does that look? And also we have some flexibility with this one. Let's turn you just a little bit. I wanna show you that it can be put up with accessories. We could even put it into a pony if we would like, but I'm just gonna do just a little pulling back to show you. Don't be afraid to accessorize. There's our clamp. And look how natural that looks. Now here's a wig that's rooted, so it looks very, very natural. And this is a great length. This type of a wig will probably last the full six months of your cancer journey. Uh, the longer one we had on just previously, I would say that would only last about half that time, about three months, and it'll start getting compromised. But if you really became a wig wearer and you enjoyed your long hair on the weekends, and this for work during the week, you'd have a whole six months or more. As your hair's growing out, you could have both wigs and pop them on and just uh, have fun with them. Okay, Donovan has chosen a wig. We've accessorized it. She's got a wedding she's gonna be in. So I've just added a headband. Again, the secret is just showing a little bit of it. 
and she's feeling just like herself. No one there, if she wears this wig with conviction, which I know she will, no one will even know this is not her hair. Now she's got to take care of it. So when she goes home and takes it off at the end of the day, she's going to put it on a wig drying stand. This is collapsible, so it can travel, but it just goes back together. It will not be stored on a mannequin styrofoam head like this. These are only for wig salons. If she takes her wig off after wearing it all day and puts it on a styrofoam head, it can't breathe. It's just like your shoes. When you take them off and your socks and your shoes are a little bit damp, that is gonna create a bacteria forming under here and under her wig. So we do not wanna use that. She's gonna put it right on the drying stand. Air is gonna circulate and it's gonna be all fresh and ready the next day to put on again. Now when it comes time to washing the wig, we're gonna have a synthetic shampoo for wig hair. And we're gonna take about a tablespoon, put it in a basin of cool water, make sure all the tangles are out of the wig. Starting at the bottom, work your way up with your brush or your fingers, take all the tangles out. And in that basin with your wig shampoo, you lay your wig down in it, swish it around a bit, go off for about five minutes, come back, swish it again lift it out and let the water out. Cool, clear water back in is just enough to rinse it. Lay your wig in there, swish it around. Have a bath towel on your counter. She'll take the wig out, lay it in the bath towel, roll it up, give it a nice little hug, take it out, shake it a tad. Then we're gonna spray leave-in conditioner just so the condition of it stays less staticky and it flows and it has a little bit of shine to it. She'll put it on her wig drying stand and by morning, it'll be all dry. She'll come out and take a look at it and go, oh my gosh, I ruined it. It looks like wet noodles. All you have to do is take your wig, shake it a little bit to wake it up, take your fingers through and it's back to the day you got it.